When you research, you make use of a wide variety of resources, images, books, articles. Your research will naturally pull in ideas and grow from the work of people who have researched before you. In this video, we will discuss a few best practices to incorporate into your work to avoid running afoul of ethical and legal issues when using these works. 1. Keep track of your sources from the beginning to avoid accidental plagiarism. 2. Always use copyrighted material responsibly. And 3. Start with materials that are released under open use licenses by the author or creator. While covering these three best practices, we will also touch on fair use, the public domain, and making proper note of the materials that you use. Best practice number one, keep track of your sources. Keeping track of the resources you use in your work will help you appropriately cite them in your own papers, whether they are articles, theses, videos, books, Citing your sources, whether you have quoted directly, summarized, or paraphrased, is the most important way to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is defined as intentionally or accidentally representing someone else's work as your own. For an in-depth treatment on plagiarism, please check out the Library Instruction Module on Plagiarism by going to www.lib.usf.edu, clicking Workshops and Tutorials on the home page, then Our Guide to Learning the Library, and finally Avoiding Plagiarism. Best Practice Number 2. Make your own content whenever you can, and if you can't, use only what you absolutely need of another's work, and use it responsibly. Copyright law protects many materials that you might use. Copyright law gives creators of original creative works the exclusive rights to copy, distribute or share, display, perform, and create derivatives or build upon their work. These exclusive rights are enacted at the creation of a work, without need to register it or place a copyright statement on it. This means that most of the pictures, film, literature, etc. that you interact with online and offline are protected by copyright law. Being able to quote others in your work without infringing on another's copyright is due to an exception in copyright law known as fair use. The fair use exception limits the exclusive rights of creators by allowing others to use copyrighted materials in specific circumstances, like criticism or scholarship. Fair use doesn't have a simple definition, however. It relies on a four-factor analysis including 1. The purpose and character of your use 2. The nature of the original work 3. The amount you use in relation to the original, and 4. The effect your use has on the market of the original. This is why using a small quote from a biography in a paper where you are comparing the idea with another can be fair use. Factor 1. Your use is considered part of research and scholarship. Your argument is even stronger if your use of the quote creates a new, distinct point. Factor 2. Copyright gives stronger protection to fiction and creative works over those that are considered non-fiction or factual. In our imaginary example, your quote is from a biography which is filled with factual information, and this makes your argument for fair use stronger. Factor 3. The amount you use in relation to the original. Quoting is typically a very small amount quantitatively in relation to the whole original work. As long as you are not using the heart of the work, or the most important part, then your use is most likely very small qualitatively as well. And finally, factor 4. A small quote most often will not replace a sale of the original or otherwise drive the market of the original away. As you see, the argument for fair use is pretty strong for this example. But what if you want to include a whole image or poem alongside your argument as a complement to your text? This argument will look very different. Factor 1. You may be including the poem or picture in your scholarship, but if your text does not need the material to make its points, your argument for fair use is less strong. Factor 2. Poetry and many images are creative works and therefore given stronger protection under the law. Factor 3. Images and poems are considered whole works in themselves, so using these materials is using all of the work, not a small portion. And 4. Your use completely duplicates the material and can potentially replace the sale of the original work. These are simplified examples. Copyright law and fair use can get a little complicated, so if you have questions, feel free to ask your copyright librarian. Now on to best practice number three. If you don't make your own content, use content that is licensed to share or for which you can easily get permissions. Plenty of materials online are now shared by their authors under open use licenses like Creative Commons licensing. These licenses allow authors to tell you what you can do with the work without requesting permissions. Your use should always abide by the license terms. So what if you want to use the material in a way that the license won't allow? 
For instance, you found a photograph online shared under a CC BY ND license, that is a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives license, where the author is allowing you to use the photograph as long as you credit them, but not build upon or make derivatives of the photograph. You want to use the photograph to make a 10-foot painted mural, which would be a derivative. Should your use not fit the open use license chosen by the author, or if you want to use material for which there is no open use license at all, you can always request permissions from the copyright owner. The library's copyright guide has more information on how to request permissions. When seeking out permissions, remember, copyright ownership does not always rest with the author or creator. Publishing processes of many types require the original authors to sign over copyright, so I suggest starting with the publishers, production companies, recording companies. Wait, you might be thinking, what if what I want to use is really old? Doesn't copyright protection expire? And you would be right. Copyright protection has a definite expiration date, but that expiration date is currently set to the life of the author plus 70 years for published materials. Due to changes in copyright law regarding how works are protected and for what duration, only those materials published before 1923 are reliably in the public domain or have had their copyright expire. For more information on the public domain and what might be included within it, aka free for you to use, please visit the library's copyright guide. A note about notes to the reader. When you use material with permissions and under an open use license, your citation should include this information. For example, when using a figure from a published article, a note under the figure or in a footnote on the same page should include or refer to the full citation of the original work, state the copyright owner of the material, and that your use is with permissions or in line with an open use license. In this video, we've covered three best practices to using copyrighted material in your work. 1. Keep track of your sources from the beginning to avoid accidental plagiarism. 2. Always use copyrighted material responsibly. And 3. Start with materials that are released under open use licenses by the author or creator. But we've only addressed a small amount of circumstances in which you may end up using copyrighted content. For those other uses, the library hosts a guide to help address more in-depth questions on copyright and use of copyrighted material. And you can always contact your copyright librarian for help.